farm. So we're back here on the farm to learn how to do the next stage of your knitting project. We've cast it on in the first video. This next video we're going to actually learn how to do the knit stitch. And what the knit stitch is, is bringing loops through loops. And so it's not that hard, it takes a little practice, but stick around. And yes, you might hear some sheep. <laughs> They always have opinions. Anyway, so stick around and I'll take you through learning how to do the knit stitch. Welcome back. So now we're learning the knit stitch. And if you noticed, uh, a little bit of time has passed. We've, we've uh, initially did our cast on stitches. We did about 30 stitches. Uh, and we're working with worsted weight wool, remember, uh, which is a medium weight wool, which is um, easy to work with. And this is, by the way, these are number size number eight needles. There you go. All right. Now, it's nice to work with wooden needles if you'd like. Uh, it's, uh, it kind of grabs the wool and keeps the, the uh, stitches from slipping off too easily. But if you, all you have is metal needles, and that's fine too. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we've done a little bit of knitting. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. And we're basically, you start with the uh, needle with your loops. You're going to put that in your left hand. Alrighty. You're going to take uh, your other empty needle, and that's going to actually create your new loops. And remember, what knitting is, is you're put it, pulling loops through loops. And so this is, in, we'll be doing that. So here we go. Now, you're going to start, here's your first stitch. By the way, we're at my sheep farm, so we, you might hear some uh, sheep in the background. They produce this lovely yarn, so they're welcome to uh, argue with me anytime they want. Alrighty, so we're going to take your left needle. You're going to go to the left of the first stitch. You're going to take that needle underneath the right-hand needle. Excuse me. Your right-hand needle is going to go underneath the left-hand needle. Alrighty. Into the loop. Alrighty. Now, you're going to hold your cross together however you want. I usually use my thumb and index finger of my left hand. Make sure you're, by the way, working with your working yarn. Your working yarn is what is attached to your ball. Alright, so make sure you're not using the tail, but you're using the working yarn. You're going to come behind that right hand needle, and you're going to hold it with the index finger of your right hand, so kind of hold it in place. And then you're going to pull that loop right through the old stitch. So the new stitch is being formed by pulling that new loop through the old loop. And you're kind of scoot your older stitches to the end of the needle so that your index finger can f lift that old stitch off the needle because that stitch has now been knitted. All right, let's try it again. Don't pull your needles apart too much, by the way. Keep them kind of close together. They're best friends. All right, so now you're going to go again to the left of that stitch, into the middle of it. Your working yarn is going around to the back of that needle. Hold it in place, hold that yarn in place so that you can easily pull through the new loop, through the old loop. The old loop is, jumps off the end of the left-hand needle. One more time in through, by the way, we have a little rhyme, in through the front door, run around back, come out through the front door, off jumps Jack. In through the front door, run around the back, come back through the front door, off jumps Jack. Alrighty, so now we've got four new stitches on to the right needle, and then this index finger kind of shoves those down, and this one shoves them up uh, as you're working your row. So, in through the front door, run around the back, come back through that front door, and off jumps Jack. Alrighty, that's a little rhyme I teach my kids when I teach them. So this is kind of how it looks. Now just remember when you're learning a new skill, it takes a while to develop that muscle memory. So just give yourself little 20 minute inter, you know, 20 minutes to just kind of practice and then take a break after that 20 minutes. Your brain can only absorb so much new information. It needs to digest it a little bit. Go have a cup of tea, go out and dig in the garden and come back and you'd be surprised how much easier it is once you you kind of take a break. So don't 
Don't suffer too much. Knitting is supposed to be enjoyable. It takes a little while to get to that point, but I promise you, if you just do a little bit every day, you will. So again, do the left of that loop, under into that loop, using that right needle, taking that working yarn around the, you're, basically that's called flicking, by the way. And you're pulling that uh, new stitch through the old stitch, and you're shoving that old stitch off. Now, if you notice, as you're working it, just lifting up that uh, right needle can, can sh take that new stitch off, but just make sure you're holding on to the other stitches so you're not pulling off too many stitches at once. You just want to pull off the, the loop that you just worked. Okay, so again, we're just pulling loops through loops. That's all knitting is. Now, in the next video, we're going to learn about purling. And once you learn how to purl, almost all knitting patterns, meaning stitch patterns, not overall pattern, but stitch patterns, are based on those two skills, knitting and purling. So we're going to focus on that. All right, so we've completed a row. We kind of spread it out a little bit. You can see what we're doing here. We're, these are all knitting stitches. We're going back and forth, and then you're ready to switch to the next row. Pull that work in the... Um, this is the tail. All right, we're pulling that down. We don't want to knit with that. You'll find out why if you ever do it. You'll run out of yarn immediately, and you got to backtrack. All right, so here we go one more time. So I hope you all enjoy learning how to knit on a farm where the wool is grown with our sheep in the background looking on. They love to hear me talk because they think, well, you know what? Dinner's coming. Well, it is coming. After I finish this, it's time to feed them some lunch. We've got about 40, no, 50 sheep on the farm now. We've got some babies. It's springtime, of course. And we just finished shearing, which means basically they got a haircut where we take the wool off, off of them. Just simply like giving them a haircut. And a lot of that fleece will then be made into yarn like this. I also sell fleeces to spinners who spin their own yarn. And I also teach spinning as well. So there's lots you can do with wool. And I hope you all have fun learning a new skill and incorporate wool in your life. Because it's much more enjoyable if you do. Alrighty, see you next time. Happy knitting!